Today, we got your favorite rappers, DJ, producer, vocal coach, Ray Rock, don't you know? Hey yo, what's going on? It's Ruslan with KingsDreamENT.com, encouraging, empowering, inspiring you to live out God's dream for your life. Today we have uh, not not just a, a interesting story, not not just a great interview. One of my favorite people in the world, ladies and gentlemen, the man behind some of your favorite artist the dj the producer the 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 vocal coach from everybody from andy minio social club ray rock how you feeling man man thank you for having me you bro. like that intro that was great you like that you intro know, like, i'm like who's he talking about we could take oh, yeah. this shindig on the road hey you know <laughs> <laughs> shout out uh to zach in the studio audience hey if you, if you haven't seen Zach's Wendell. interview, uh, Zach Wendell, we just did an interview with him. You should go check that out. Um, Ray, let's start at the beginning, man. Where Where are you from, and and who is Ray Rock? Wow, where am I from, and who is Ray Rock? Man, that's I'm gonna give you the Reader's Digest version of that, the Jet version. Um, I was born in Puerto Rico, and uh, grew up in New York City. Uh, back and forth from Brooklyn and Queens. Um, and uh, I'm just a guy who, um, man, like, went to church. Someone saw potential in me. Hmm. People poured into me. Um, I bought my first turntable and sampler off of uh, a buddy of mine named Dre Beats. Shout out to Dre Beats. Shout out to Dre Beats. Yeah, man. And uh, I think I was 16 at the time. Um, I had uh, a paper route through a buddy of mine in my, on my block. And uh, he just got bored doing it. So he was hitting me off about for me to take over his uh, paper route. And I saved my money and, and also, you know, my Christmas money. And I bought my first drum machine off of him. And that was a 2000, an MPC 2000. Wow. I had an MPC uh, 1000. Oof. I had a no, I had a one thousand myself too. Yeah. I've had a I had I've I've, I've had a bunch of NPCs. Yeah. I even had a NPC sixty two with a three thousand upgrade. Okay, know? okay. That's, that that was the hack. Yeah. You know, yeah, if you yeah couldn't yeah. afford a NPC three thousand. You got the NPC sixty two uh-huh. uh, with the three thousand upgrade. Yeah. So that's how you got into production. Um, you 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 essentially just saved up your money from paper out and went and did it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Which the the on ramp I feel like was a bit tougher back then. To if you wanted to be a producer, now you can just buy Logic for 200 bucks, buy oh, yeah. uh, you know Fruity Loops, Reason. Shout out to Reason Gang, the best dog in the universe. Um, now uh, now it's easier. Back then it was a bit tougher to get into producing. Oh, definitely. I mean, think about this, man. Like back in the day when you were trying to look all cool and you know. And, and you know, trying to stun on people, you know, wearing the freshest Jordans every day. You know, I was wearing I was wearing the same pair of shoes for a while because equipment was more important for me. You know mm, what I mean? Mm. Buying a rack was more important for me. You know, buying records were more important for me. Hmm. So um, it's just different priorities. You grew up. You said uh, back and forth between Queens and Brooklyn. Yeah. You ended up going to church uh, for a while while you were in New York, uh, Christ Tabernacle. Yep, shout out to Christ Tabernacle. Uh, Youth Explosion is the ministry you came up in. Yep, shout out to Adam Durso and Chris Durso. Um, That had to have played an impact in terms of your development as a creative, going to a creative church like that. Definitely, definitely. Tell them, tell them who Adam Durso, Chris Durso is. If people don't know, I mean, I think a lot of people know who Chris Durso is at this point. But who were they? Who are they? And like, the, what? How dope? Like, Christ Tabernacle and Youth Explosion and Misfits was back then specifically. Oh man, let me tell you something, man. Uh, Adam Durso, Chris Durso. Uh, the vision started with Adam Durso, and it was just a larger than life vision. This is at a time where you know hip hop couldn't was not allowed in churches Mm -hmm. uh, at all um you know um they were the type of people that uh can get 
you know, 2,500 kids in a building mm -hmm. uh, who didn't know Jesus at all mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and have Vibe Magazine or Double XL show up and say, what's happening here? Mm. You know, uh, I think there was a, a cop, there's a copy actually, you can find it online, of the source where uh, 50 Cent is in the front. Get Rich or Die Trying is the biggest album, and right dead in the center is a church group, uh, youth group. Wow. Called youth that's group. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the type of people that um, uh, poured into me, people who are like, you know, um, you know, you have talent, you know, why mm. don't you use that here? Yeah. And uh, and that, and honestly, it kept me from a lot of things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, there's always temptations out there, you yeah. know, as, even as great as my parents were, you know, there's yeah. still those little temptations you have as a teenager to, to, to wild out, you know what I mean? And, and just be at the wrong place at the wrong time. I think one of the things that was beneficial for me is as I got saved pretty early on, my youth pastors, took notice that I made music and started giving me an outlet for it. Probably, bef in hindsight, probably before they should have. <laughs> uh, but I, 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 got a, I got the access to do songs at youth group, to do this, to do that, in a way smaller scale than what Youth Explosion was at the time. Oh, yeah. That was, but that was pretty properly instrumental to not just your creative development, but your spiritual development, having a voice in church. Oh, definitely, man. I was a kid with a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents got divorced when I was really young. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was just a lot of um, emotional abuse and, and just a lot of trauma mm -hmm. uh, that just, you know, I, you know, I went through a lot of things from the ages of zero to eight that will make a grown man's eyebrows wild out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, um, and just going to a place where, um, you know, you can come as you are and um, people can just love on you and, mm -hmm. and, and not judge you mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and, and pour into you. You yeah. know what I mean? I was yeah. borrowing a, a $4,000 keyboard mm -hmm. and taking it home. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, where, where can world That's crazy. Can do that? You get what I'm saying? You know, I had yeah. I, I had a I had a Triton and a Trinity, yeah. you know, at the yeah. crib. You know what I'm saying? On yeah. a weekday, uh, I mean, who who does that? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. and that's that that was pivotal in my walk. You know, and and just people who showed me how to love on on the least of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, we would do these things where we would. Uh, Late at night, we would just go to the hardest parks in New York City mm -hmm. where, you know, there's crack being sold, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, prostitutes walking around, and we would do, like, you know, evangelism walks, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, they were, they were crazy for taking me with them because I was always the youngest one, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I was, like, 14, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, and and I was not still getting my mind wrapped around, you know, Christianity, you okay. know, and I'm I'm over here uh, uh, being told, yo, Ray, we we about to pray for this uh, this drug addict. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, it, and it really, really, really formed my spiritual formation. Mm. You know what I mean? Knowing that um, that we're supposed to displace ourselves for the sake of the gospel. I love that. Um that's so dope, man. And I, uh, I remember what year was this? This, this could have been 08, 09, 2010, maybe it was 2010. I remember, uh, Braille was living out, out here in San Marcos. Shout out to Braille, um, and humble beast and beautiful eulogy. Braille was out here. And I remember, I don't know if this is my first or second time, but I remember I was like, yo, bro, like we, we were just starting out. We was just like, this is the breaks, me and Belief, the first couple times flying to shows. And what, what would happen is we would book a show. <laughs> we booked a show at like Smith College, all women's school in Massachusetts, <laughs> right? And, and we book a show. And it'd be like a cool, like like a cool paying show. Okay, okay. We could fly out, and then I'd be like, all right, well, I'm in Massachusetts, and I was always fascinated with New York, always Let's fascinated go. with New York culture, never it's been. The mecca. It's the, it really is it's like it mecca. really is. I don't think people understand, and I till this day. If you ever want to just get me for a really cheap or free show or speaking gig, just just be in New York and fly me out Come somewhere. Because I'll go. I'll go for like for nothing. <laughs> like just if I could be in New York. Uh, so we, uh, me and Belief, we hit a Braille. Bro, we're going to New York. Braille was the man at the time. Uh, he was everywhere. He was everywhere. And he's like, yo, uh, I'm going to connect you. 
uh, there's this youth ministry out there. It's one of the biggest in the country. He's like, bro, if there's anywhere I would relocate, I could see myself like living here and being a part of this ministry. It's so dope. And I was like, oh, where? He's like, yeah, it's called Youth Explosion. They got this real cool young pastor named Chris Durso. We're going to, I connect y'all. So boom, he connects us. And I, and, and I don't remember if it was the first or second time going, but I remember hopping on like a conference call. And I don't know if you were on the conference call, but it was, we were doing like a hip hop opera. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. And, and we're doing this, Joy. And, um, and, and Andy Minio was a part of that opera. No, he was Sea Light. Sea Light was time. a part of oh, the yeah. opera. Oh, yeah. And we're all on this call. And and I remember, like, there, like Chris Durso was talking you and Sea Light up. He's like, yeah, Ray Rock and Sea Light. I was like, Ray Rock and Sea Light? Like, these fools, what, who are these guys? Like, yeah. you know, but it was like the name, like, the, they, just the way they spoke about you. And so, anyway, we pull up. And I remember, uh, I remember we were there, and I remember being pretty sick. Like I had, I, like I was like drinking tea, and you was back there, and you were the first dude. I remember this so vividly. <laughs> I walked up, and uh, and I didn't know who Andy was. I didn't know any. any we were just kind of hanging out backstage. And he was like, "Yo, uh, yo, yo, we just vibing with these beats, yo." Uh, da, 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 da. And, you, and you had these uh, the first Beats the by Dre, Dre beats, yeah. but they were like the in ears. Yeah, I had no never seen had them joints before, bro. And I was like, okay, so like I, I was like, yo, dude is nice. And then it, it, I remember you, me, Belief, Andy ended up hanging out backstage, the green room, yeah. and you were very like uh, I don't know if I learned this in hindsight, but in the moment I don't remember, but I remember like. You were essentially speaking to Andy about aesthetic. Like you were like, you, you had the, he had the beard. You was like, yo, try these glasses. He was dressed cool. Like, and I remember noticing that like you were doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff for and for C Light at the time. He wasn't even Andy Minio to make sure that as a as a white rapper he had an authentic hip hop package yeah. you know what i'm saying and my aesthetic at the time was a train wreck like i had the buzz cut yeah. you know what i'm saying i was we had a shoe endorsement with a company called Airspeeds, uh Oof. and because they gave us free shoes we just wore these shoes that were in walmart all the time <laughs> and so my aesthetic was whack and chris durso was the one that actually told me like bro you got to start dressing cooler like you guys yeah. you, you dress whack you know what i'm saying but talk about that those early days um working with Andy, working with Chris Durso, and like the role you would play in, I, I don't know if the word is branding, I don't know if the word is coaching, but just the, like helping artists piece together the total package. Because a lot of guys overlook the visual aesthetic. They overlook, um, if, you know, and you would ask me questions like, yo, if you was any, if you was a wrestler, like yeah. what kind of wrestler? Which wrestler would you be if you had yeah. to pick being a wrestler? You know what I'm saying? Like, would you be a uh, 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 what is it? A pretty boy or a heel? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I like talk about those early days. This is 2009, yeah. 2010, 2011, somewhere in that ballpark. I don't remember. I remember it was right before Background came out. I do remember that. Yeah, um, man. I, I was just consuming a lot of material. I was reading a lot, and I was also absorbing uh, people, mm -hmm. right? Cause I've I'm not the fashion guy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just was next to a fashion guy. So, mm -hmm. Chris Durso mm -hmm. was the fashion right. guy. Yeah, Chris yeah. has always been fresh. Oh yeah, and yeah. so for me, I modeled, I picked up things from him mm -hmm. in the choices that I made. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, and so like I would pick up stuff from him and pick up stuff from a guy named Carmelo mm -hmm. uh, and Lenny that they they just were just always fresh you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying mm -hmm. and it was tough for me because i always had this tension between like wanting to look cool and mm -hmm. wanting to have gear mm -hmm. to take me to the next level mm -hmm. so i had dre beats in ears you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and i had like adidas you know what i'm saying track shoes before adidas was cool you know what i'm saying <laughs> like now everybody's everybody's like yo adidas bro yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. you know and so uh but speaking on my role man honestly man mm -hmm. like um I learned everything being a servant and being a friend. Mm. You know, that's basically the DNA that got me to where I am today mm. is being a friend and being a servant. And so with Andy Minio specifically, mm. I was just a friend.